G'day folks, welcome back to another weekly update for the 1st of May. And uh, whilst it was a slightly shorter week, we still had uh, a, a week of um, some uh, amazing moves with gold and the S&P 500 index in particular just continuing to set new highs every day and pretty much close on their, on their high extreme of the day as well. Um, we had the Australian market uh, being sold off towards the end of last week and uh, that really is um, uh, very confusing to uh, to see what's going on with the Australian market when uh, things all the things that should contribute to a stronger market are there, but um, but we're just not in favour at all as far as overseas investors go. So uh, we really need to focus in on on what is working, and um, it hasn't really changed a great deal in the last couple of weeks. So uh, we'll uh, get into um, into the action and have a look where we can uh, make some best profits in coming weeks. So here's just the uh, the normal important information uh, with respect to uh, this being general advice only. Uh, so these do not constitute trading recommendations. You just need to uh, weigh this information up against your own trading plan and make your own decisions on these trades. So the, uh, the action from uh, Friday night, the S&P was higher uh, yet again. I seem to be saying that uh, constantly, but uh, it's something like uh, seven or eight of the last nine sessions higher, then um, that's all that's really been happening in America. Now, this is what I wrote last week, um, that the US index had just completed a 38.2% retracement of, uh, of the recent move and should break out soon. And in fact, it did that last week, even though there were only four trading days. Um, it did it in very robust fashion. And uh, we'll take a look at that chart in just a minute. But 1400 plus uh, looks extremely likely now the way the S&P is going. Uh, the US dollar had another shock a week. And we'll have a look at that chart. And uh, again, last week, this is what I wrote, that the Aussie dollar was, uh, was at 107 and uh, seemingly headed for 110. And I've maintained that since the Aussie was trading at about 97 cents. Uh, and in fact, we did close the week at uh, around 109 and a half, so uh, getting very, very close to uh, to that 110 mark. Uh, a lot of people are considering that uh, 110 is the is the magic number, and the Aussie will reverse and head back down. But uh, but frankly, uh, the U.S. market has not hit um, the U.S. dollar has not hit bottom yet, so I still think there's some further upside for the Australian dollar. Uh, our indices are seriously struggling, and uh, we've just got to recognise that and uh, and pursue the opportunities where where there is some momentum. Gold had a huge week; it was up fifty-seven dollars on the week, and I believe gold, uh, as again as I've been saying for um, about four years, I was talking uh, when gold was down at seven hundred. I was saying gold at a thousand, and a lot of people laughed at me. Um, I still think gold has a lot of upside, and, I, and I've been saying for the last two years that $2,000 an ounce was very much on the cards. Um, we're now at uh, 1565 and, uh, and really starting to measure. So I think gold has still got plenty of upside yet. Uh, so is silver. I'm still of the view that silver, we'll see silver over $100 possibly this year. Um, and it's just consolidating its recent amazing run around $47. But uh, we may pull back a little bit more in silver, but I still think there's, uh, there's a terrific run ahead for silver. Uh, oil was steady for the week, and the Small Ordinaries Index sold off to um, exactly to the point, the 50% retracement level at uh, 27.44. Um, so is the next level down at 2700? Is that still in play? I think you'd probably have to say it was. And when we have a look at the chart, I think that'll become a little bit a little bit obvious. So let's have a look at some of those charts now. So we'll start with the US dollar, and uh, this is the US dollar on a uh, on a daily chart. And uh, we'll pan back and have a look at the big picture. And uh, that, let's pan back and have a look at the really big picture. So the Fed and the US government has done an amazingly effective job of completely trashing the US dollar from uh, 120 on the US dollar index. And we're now down to about 73. Um, so that's, that's an amazing loss of uh, purchasing power for the world's reserve currency. Uh, you can see now that we're really um, zoning in on the, the lows that were formed down here in, um, in March of 2008 at the bottom of the GFC. 
and I see no reason with all these support levels being broken uh, why we won't get down there and that will probably correspond to an Aussie dollar around about 114 uh, or 115 and I wouldn't be surprised to see the US dollar actually break uh, that level down there at 71 and, uh, and head lower. Uh, let's have a look at the S&P 500 and that's the monthly chart on the S&P just to give you a, a broader perspective and if you look at the way that it's going in this strength here since um, since July of 2010 um, you really have to be a brave person to say that this can't get to 1550 even though certainly the fundamentals do not support it uh, we've already let's have a look at the retracements on a monthly chart about where we should be, um, slightly lower. Yeah, so you can see that we've um, the index ran up to the 61.8% level almost precisely. That was at uh, about 1229. Um, pulled back to the 38.2 which was again perfect symmetry almost to the point and now we're, we're barreling back up again. There is a bit of a, um, there's a little bit of a technical resistance level just up here, somewhere between 14, 14 and 10 and about 14 and 40. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this just blast straight through it and, uh, and head back up to 1550. So quite, uh, quite amazing performance by the S&P. Uh, let's look at it now on a daily basis. And um, as I indicated last, uh, last weekend, where the index finished uh, here, and I said a breakout looked eminent. Well, in fact, we, it just went bang, one, two, three, four, five days higher, and, um, and looking very, very strong. Each one of those days closed on or very close to the high point of the day, which indicates uh, a lot of uh, trader and investor conviction. Let's have a look at gold, and this is gold on a weekly chart, and you can see it's uh, it's well overbought here on a weekly basis, but it could hang up here for another couple of weeks. Uh, I'm looking at somewhere around about the 1590 to 1600 area. I think 1600 as a as a psychological resistance level may come into play, and you therefore may get a bit of a mild pullback maybe around the 1550-1540 area would, would seem to be about right given the strength of this move and then I think we'll, we'll then see a um, probably a very substantial run higher and that run potentially uh, could even zip up to um, towards the 2000 mark in, in coming months. Uh, I'm not saying that it will but if the US dollar did, did really fall apart then that's a distinct possibility. So gold I think was a bit more in the run yet, uh, then a bit of a pullback, and then that'll be an ideal opportunity. Somewhere around this 1540, 1550 area, I think, would be where I'd be looking to take a position in gold for, for then a, a probably a, a, the fastest part of the run. Let's have a look at silver. Silver chart has been even stronger, but is just consolidating this, this recent massive run. There were some pretty substantial volumes, as you can see, in silver in the week. A part of that was because it, there was some selling when it uh, got up close to $50. Um, so silver, I'm still looking for hopefully a retracement to this 40 to 42 area. Uh, we may not get it, um, but we just have to see how it, how it unfolds. But certainly gold is the one that's outperforming in the very short term. Uh, and we'll just have a quick look at the, uh, the Dow Jones, just by comparison. So you can see the Dow Jones Industrial Index even stronger. Uh, this is a um, this is a daily chart of the Dow, and it's run harder than and more positively than the S and P. And because of that, I think that's indicating that uh, certainly the major stocks are being supported, which indicates uh, you know a great deal of conviction in the American market at the moment. Now let's have a look at our sad story in terms of indexes. So this is the the uh, ASX 200. So we had a 
very close to a perfect retracement of this run here from the 17th of March to the 11th of April. Um, the first retracement level was 4.786. Uh, we got to a low of um, 4.788, so almost perfect. Uh, we bounced, we formed a lower high and it um, did, did manage to scramble back off its lows on Friday, but um, our index is just looking absolutely terrible. So the possibility of 47.27 um, or even down here um, really still still exists. We could be seeing a big ABC pattern playing out here. There's the A leg here, B up, and, uh, and the C leg yet to play out. So that's still a possibility. So we really don't want to be doing any uh, strong buying on the uh, on the Australian market, particularly the large caps. And if we do, it needs to be uh, from the from the bottom of corrections. Let's have a look at the finance index. And uh, again, this is a daily chart on the finance index. Let's have a look at it on a uh, on a weekly chart. Let's get a bigger picture perspective, and you can see. Finance index doing absolutely nothing. It's just caught in this range, trading at the same level as September 09. So certainly no uh, no joy there in the finance index. Uh, this is materials. So we did have a sell off on uh, Friday. Uh, got down close to the 150, and it's definitely an ABC pattern having formed out there. Let's look at it weekly. And you can see much, much different shape and much stronger than the, uh, the finance index. Uh, but in the very short term, it's consolidating as well. Uh, we'll look at energy. And uh, big sell-off in energy stocks on, uh, on Friday. Uh, but let's take a look weekly. And certainly some strength in, uh, in energy on a weekly basis. But again, we've... We've had a bit of a false break of this range, and now we're, we're back into that range again. So energy stops coming off the boil to a degree as well. And uh, the final one is the um, Small Ordinaries Index. Uh, the XSO, so you can see we've, got, we've run up, we've had a, uh, a triple top formation here, here, and here. Uh, we then had a reasonably significant sell-off and <clears throat> the market has recovered, formed a lower high and now we're tracing out <clears throat> what looks to be a very definite ABC pattern. So here's our A leg down to here, B leg back up to here and the C leg still to play out. Now the 50% retracement level was 2744 and we reached 2744 on Friday as a low point. It may be this is the low point, but my feeling is that we've still got a bit more downside. I think it, it's more likely than not that we're going to head, head down a little bit further on the small ordinaries as well. And given that this is a pretty seasonally weak period of the year from May through to about uh, August, September is, um, is not always, but is traditionally a weaker period of the year, then um, then seeing some lower prices in the small ordinaries index wouldn't surprise at all. So let's head back to um, let's head back to the uh, presentation. So this is um, and, and these copper prices and copper inventories are an absolute mystery to me. We've got uh, copper inventory continuing to rise uh, quite steeply. And it's getting back now to a level that we were at in um, June, July of last year. So we're on about that same level, about 460,000 tonnes in the London Metals Exchange warehouse. This is the copper price. You can see, despite the fact that inventory levels have been rising quite steeply, the copper price has just basically been consolidating sideways. And if we look at where it is, the last time that inventory levels were at this at this point, copper price was about $3.35, $3.40 a pound. Uh, now we're looking at about $4.30 a pound. So there's, there's a disconnect there between what's happening with inventories and what's happening with um, the actual price. 
gets even more mysterious when we go on to nickel. <clears throat> you can see that nickel inventories are falling like a stone. Um, and really, they, there should be some consistency between nickel and copper. So I'm really scratching my head with that one. Um, so we should be expecting nickel prices to be rising strongly. But in fact, they're only going sideways as well. So there's certainly some, um, some dynamics in the base metals markets that are a little bit unusual. And it just smells to me a little bit like there's a, a bit of price manipulation going on. So we just need to take a little bit of care with those um, the stocks that are exposed to copper and nickel. This is the tin price chart. Big picture still going up. A little bit of consolidation in the short term, but we've, um, we've been above uh, $33,000 a ton during the last couple of weeks. Um, so that's really, really good for these emerging tin producers. I, I know that they've not been doing very much, but um, uh, they will over time. So let's have a look now at the, uh, the action summary. The overall strategy is um, assume that the large cap stocks are stuck in a trading range. That means that we, from a, from a tactical point of view, we need to be looking to buy the bottom of the ranges, so after corrections, and selling at the top of the ranges and not looking for these large caps to really go too far. <coughs> um, overall, lower exposure. Um, regularly take some partial profits once the market's been rising for a while, I think is the, um, is the prudent thing to do. But be prepared to load up immediately following corrections because that's going to be the opportunity to make some very good gains fairly quickly. So this is going to require some patience and some discipline and, um, and just making sure that you adjust your exposure level as conditions dictate. The bullish moves are in gold, silver, and the S&P 500 and uh, for members I'll be making uh, specific recommendations on the entries on, on those but uh, certainly we've had a fantastic run uh, this year. I know um, uh, many members have done extremely well out of, uh, out of silver and I've heard of some, some fantastic profits uh, coming through in, in silver and I think the S&P and, uh, and gold offer those opportunities as well. So that's it for this week. Uh, we'll uh, we'll talk again next week. Cheers.